So today we're talking about the Kumu Honua Mauliola and other Hawaii thing. My email is there, aajikate at gmail.com if you want to reach out. Um, my name is Kuule Pereira Keavekane. I come from Panaeva, Hawaii. Um, Panaeva is a Hawaiian homes community in the Moku of Hilo in the Ahupua of Waiakea on Hawaii Island. I'm calling in from there. Um, I think nine of us had taken the uh, the survey. So let me just let me just let's go over the answers. So um Mauliola is a little bit different from the word Maoli Ola. Maoli and Mauli are two different things. Uh, Mauliola is the word for indigenous health. Uh, Mauliola is also the name of a Hawaiian island. And that island is Sand Island off the island of Oahu. So Mauliola is, is an older name for that place. The second question, the second question asks, what is the Kumu Honua Mauliola? Uh, most people answered an educational philosophy statement. Some of you answered B and C, and B and C is the correct answer. Um, I have a friend, his name is Ika Aka Nahuevai. He plays music with Kaikena, and he recently, over the last year or so, I want to say, released a cool reggae song called the Kumu Honua Mauliola. That song is actually based on what we're talking about today. So the answer is B and C for that one. The three pico, you had the options of the navel, the hands, and the feet, the navel, the eyes, and the mouth, or E, O, and A. Ah. Most of you answered E, O, and A, ah, and that was the correct answer, E, O, and A. Ah. I asked in this poll what the four components of Mauliola are, and I'm really grateful that nobody chose Moana, Maui, Lilo, and Stitch because that would I would just end this whole Zoom if anybody chose that one. <laughs> but uh, the correct answer is B, actually. Pili Uhane, Olelo, Lavena, and Ike Kuuna. So we'll learn a little bit about, about that today. Um, we were asked what are three of the five protective factors, social connections, communication, and skill building, um, parental resilience, discipline, education, social and emotional competence of children, parental resilience, and cooking and baking, which is nice, but it's not one of the protective factors necessarily. So the correct answer is C, parental resilience, social connections, and concrete support in time of need. So mahalo for taking that poll. If you're new, no worries. You can take them again at the end because we'll be doing that again. Mahalo, mahalo. Okay, I guess, I guess that's what I was supposed to do while I was answering the questions because now you can see the results, right? Because before that, you was just looking at me talk. Anyway. Let's move on to the actual thing that we're supposed to be doing right now, which is this presentation on the Kumu Honua Mauliola. Um, before I move on, I just want to give my aloha to Auntie Melinda. Aloha, Auntie Melinda. Good to see you in this space. And also Kainoe Lani Lee, who is my best friend of 55 years. Uh, just kidding, but we were <laughs> best friends for a long time. So aloha to you and love you, Nui Loa. Um, to everyone else who I have yet to meet, aloha to you all, and um, I hope we can keep in touch uh, after this session. My email address is on the screen if you want to um, keep in touch or have me host any of the things you're working on as well. Um, that was my email address. So today we're looking at the Kumu Honua Mauliola. The Kumu Honua Mauliola is an educational philosophy statement that takes the form of a PDF or um, a printed book. It looks like this, this green one with this, uh, this fish hook on top. This is the Kumu Honua Mauliola. I made this presentation, and I'm going to post it on the SCED platform soon. Um, and if you want me to email you this presentation, I can. Just uh, email me at the one I had on the... Uh, I'll, I'll put, uh, can you put the email, my email address in the chat, bye? Um, 
but this is a PDF. And so if you if you scroll down, you, you'll see that this PDF is written in Hawaiian. Um, it's, it's an entire document. It's an entire educational philosophy statement written in Hawaiian and explained in other languages. So um, it's not translated, it's explained because not, a lot of these concepts are not translatable in other languages, but they, the authors use other languages to describe the work so that people can understand or develop some kind of understanding about what, what the philosophy statement is about. So in this PDF, you'll find a lot of the images that I'm gonna be sharing about today. Um, and you'll have access to this PDF afterward. Caleb, Caleb, aloha oi. My audio is going in and out. Okay, great. Nobody, nobody told me that. Can you folks hear me okay? Okay, I wonder if, let me see. Okay, you folks can hear me okay. Okay, my kai. Good to see you, Caleb. I don't know if you're still here or if you left but if he was even from the first session maybe anyways because i just looked at the chat right now <laughs> okay okay so the kumuhonua mauliola is an educational philosophy statement that basically says that knowing who you are and knowing your cultural root is important to your wellness um this philosophy statement helps us to understand that for hawaii's our wellness and our ability to function well in the societies and the and the um, communities that we're part of, in order to function well in those spaces, we have to have some things, pa a, a few things that are really secure for us in our identities. Um, you can see this, uh, this, let me see if I can annotate this right here. This image right here is the song, the Kumuhonua Mauliola song that my friend released. Um, and then there's this piece about protective factors in the middle. All of these are links. So even this one, this link, if you click on it, if you click on it, if you click on it, it'll take you to the song so that you can learn the song and jam the cool reggae song. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about the kumuhonua mauliola, and then we're going to go over some of those protective factors and how they um, are related to the Hawaii worldview. So in the kumuhonua mauliola, uh, it talks about mauliola. Can we, can we unmute ourselves and say the word mauliola? Mauliola. Mauliola. Oh, yeah, no. Mauliola is a little bit different than Mauliola, which is what I was saying earlier. We can see here that Mauliola means the breath of life or the power of healing. It's also the name of Sand Island off of Oahu. Uh, and then Mauliola is also a place name at Kilauea Volcano, Hawaii. We see here that it's also the name of an Akua, of an Akua Hawaii, of a Hawaiian deity. Um, other works related to Mauliola is that uh, Dr. Kiawe Aimoku Kaholo Kula put together, he's actually friends with Dr. Kimo Alameda, but um, he put together this presentation and actually this framework called the Pokihi Framework uh, that talks about pathways to optimal health and well being for Native Hawaiians. If you end up with this presentation, this is also linked. So if you press this, it'll take you to the PowerPoint presentation that Dr. Kaholo Kula put together. Okay, once upon a time, I didn't even know how to work Zoom. So how about a spiritual round of applause for all these things I just did on this slide? <laughs> okay. Okay, so the educational philosophy, the PDF and the book teaches us about these four ow ow. And ow ow, it doesn't mean go bathe, okay? Because that's ow ow. Um, also to swim is like ow ow kai. But ao ao means side um, or like um, part, you could say it means like a part. So the ao ao pili uhane is the part of mauliola that involves spirituality and ceremony. So for Japanese people, that might look like a different photo, but for Hawaii's, uh, and for Filipino people, also for Chukis people, people from Nugoro, like it might look different than in these photos, but it's the same concept. 
that these are the pillars of Native Hawaiian health or of, of indigenous health, you know. So number one, you can see Kumuhiapo Pereira with a kihei, and that is an a'ahu, or that's a Hawaii uh, thing, the, the kihei. And you can see because of the kihei and because that girl who is drinking from that niu, that that is a ceremony. So that is one au au or one side of mauliola, which involves spirituality and ceremony. In, in the number two picture, you can see this cute baby who is probably a 50-year-old adult by now because this picture is actually old. Uh, but but this baby is, is sitting in front of this computer with this thing that says pono or puna or pana or it says one of those. One, <laughs> sorry, I can't see. It, it says a Hawaii word on there. And that's because this baby is learning olelo. But you see that it also has the pictures. It also has the pictures there. And so in this space, this baby is learning not just the language that she'll say with her mouth, but the worldview of her people. And so she's learning that in this space, not just through the computer program, but she's part of a Hawaiian immersion school. And so in that school, they're learning about those things. Can we unmute ourselves and say the word pili uhane? Pili uhane. Pili uhane. Pili uhane. Pili uhane. Yeah, no. Let's also say the word olelo. 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 Olelo, olelo comes from the word alelo, and alelo is tongue, in case anybody didn't know that. Okay, we have the Ao Ao Lavena, which is depicted in the third photo, those keiki with lei. Um, the Ao Ao Lavena talks about customs and behaviors. And then the Ao Ao Ike Kuuna talks about traditional knowledge, which is depicted by the hula. So the Kubu Honua Mauliola teaches us that for Hawaii people, all of these things have to do with the wellness of our minds and our bodies and our spirits. Prayer is one example of that limb that is the spirituality. So prayer for these people look like this, but if this was a Japanese family or a Maori family or an, a non-Christian family, maybe this would look differently. The, the photo would be different, but the idea would be the same. Uh, that this is an example of that, of that side of health. Ao ao olelo, o kahai olelo makapapa hanapuka kula he la anaia o ka ao ao olelo. Um, this is a photo of a Hawaii worldview and way of being. Um, in the graduation ceremony, it's not it's not just a thing where they graduate and yay grand party. There's a there's actually a particular function of the language in that space. So at this moment, um, or or when there is graduation graduations, these students will oftentimes um, be responsible for reciting their genealogy, talking about where they're from and what places raised them, um, and also acknowledging the people that they come from in re in really deep ways. And and that's in the not just the language of their ancestors, but the world view like really understanding that those are the important things of the of the graduation understanding that it's not an individual thing it's like a, a family thing a thing related to your lineage your graduation your accomplishment you know so keeping the world view um, intact is important to the wellness of the people ao ao lavena can everyone unmute yourselves and say lavena 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 oh you know uh, anybody know what is a malihini? Visitor? Visitor, yes, visitor. Um, or guest, or um, people, who, like a person who is not from where you are. And so I think from a Euro-American worldview, um, if you go to, or um, if you're not from Hawaii, you are a malihini. Or if you're not, if you don't live in Hawaii, you're a malihini. And if you do live in Hawaii, and if you are from Hawaii, you get to call yourself kama'aina. Uh, from a Hawaii worldview, if I go to your house, I am not kama'aina to your house. 
I'm a malihini to your house. If I from Pana Eva go over to Molokai where Uilani lives, I am not a kamaaina at Molokai. I am a malihini to Molokai. If I go to Kona, which is a different, even moku on my same island, I am not kamaaina in Kona. I am malihini in Kona. If I go to even Keo Kaha, which is a different community in my ahupua, in, 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 my, in my community, it's a different community in my community. I'm still not, I'm not, uh, um, if I didn't grow up in Keokaha, and if Keokaha is not my place, and if I don't have kupuna in Keokaha, if I don't have genealogy tied to Keokaha, I'm not kamaaina in Keokaha. I'm malihini in Keokaha. So this is like the, the Hawaii worldview that is perpetuated by this concept of the lavena. For Hawaii people, welcoming malihini, taking care of malihini, Malama Malihini. That's a Hawaiian way. That's a, an old Hawaii way. I think over time, as we step away further and further away from the old concepts of Hawaii and Hawaiian-ness, um, we start to step into these other perspectives and other worldviews, like um like the concept of like the like the haole being the enemy. Like that concept, that that that's actually not really an old concept, um, but also in the evolution of our history, that was like a, a complex thing too. But anyway, just the concept of ho'okipa malihini, that, that's a Hawaii thing. That's a Hawaii behavior. That's a Hawaii custom. Okay. Ao ao ike kuuna. Okahaku lei, okahaku lei hulu he la anaia oka ao ao ike kuuna. Uh, anybody know what this is that this person is making? Feather lei hulu? Yes, lei hulu. I a feather lei. And so a, a lei hulu is uh, when you have one rope and you 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 in you cut one feather at a time to be like this small or smaller like this. And you one to two feathers at a time, you lash it to this rope. And that takes about 10 to 12 generations. Okay, so it takes a lot of time to be making those things. Okahakule hulu do. Those kinds of things, those those activities, those old ways of of spending your time. That is the au au ike kuuna. So that is the hula, that is the hakule hulu, that is the hilo when you hilo lay, when you make lay. Uh, somebody give me another example of, of an ao ao ike kuuna, something in the ao ao ike kuuna. Hala, hala weaving. Yes, hala weaving. Hola lay, hala weaving. Maybe one more. Uh, Kalua pig? Yes, yes, the emu. Yes, emu? the emu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The emu is an is is maka ao ao ike kuuna. It's in this area of um, Hawaii traditions. So the imu, the throwing net, the fishing, the paniolo action, um, the picking opihi, the kanikapila, the um, the all of those those kinds of things. You know, the Hawaii things that people like to do. That's from the ao ao ike kuuna. Um, when uh, uilani, do you have a nao? You have a question? This is uh, thinking that so ike kuuna would be a practice or tradition that is passed on from one generation to the other. Yes, 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 that's Pololei. Are you familiar with the Kumuhonua Mauliola? Little bit. <laughs> okay, that's awesome because that's true. So um, it, it's, it's almost like, because ideally you would have learned from your own ohana. So for example, my own ohana, our Ike Kuuna is um, music. So I learned a lot of the music that I play today and my singing comes from my dad and my dad's singing comes from his mom and his mom's singing comes from her mom and her mom and her dad. So it's generations of that tradition. You know, um, I think later on we'll get into how not a lot of people have those opportunities anymore because people got nine to fives and now they're no longer farming pigs or making emu or smoking meat or making lay because now they have to work for a job to provide for their family. Yeah. So we get into that in a little bit. Okay. For Hawaii people, we have we have three people. 
Um, and no, not three of the things on your stomach because that would be weird. But three pico are these three central connections, central portals for connection. Everyone, if you could put your hand on your head. Can everyone unmute yourself? Try and do it with your other hand. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, unmute yourself <laughs> and say, pico e. Pico, pico, e. E. pico e. This is our pico e. So when babies are born, their pico e is really, really soft. It's the fontanelle, it's that soft spot on the baby's head. Our pico e, you can see in image number one, connects us to spirit. And so for some people, that's that's Jesus. And for some people, that's Jehovah God or Buddha or Allah or the universe or the crystals. Like different people have different ideas of what spirit is. But that pico e is how we connect to that information. When babies are born, their pico e is so soft that, that Hawaii people say they can see kupuna. They can like see the old people of your ohana. They can hear the old people of your ohana. So I think in Euro-American systems of being and in Euro-American worldviews, children are not as important as the older people or like as the adults. Um, children don't know any better. They can't do for themselves or she's just a baby. How is she supposed to know that? But from a from a ikamoliola ikialo kamoliola in how in Hawaii worldviews, our children know far more than we do, and they are far more um, uh, connected spiritually than we are, and so that's talking about the pico e. Can I really place your hand over your pico? You know, like your actual pico, because I don't know how to say that word. It's like umbilicus or um, umbilicus or like you um, umbilicus. Or I don't know what is that, but your actual pico, right? Yes. So that is your pico o. Everyone, can you say pico o? Pico, pico. O. pico o. Our pico o connected us once upon a time, and is connecting us to our tita who is hapai here in this space. Um, our pico e connects us to our mother, um, and. Her pico e, I mean pico o, her pico o connected her to her mother. And her pico o connected her to her mother and her mother. So in image numbers two, you can see that baby, right? And you can see her parents and her family. So those real life people are the people of her pico o. Uh, for Hawaii well-being, you need to maintain these connections um, to the people that you come from. Um, and I and I know that gets to be really tricky because of the situation with the Hanai or the situation with the um I don't know my parents, you know, like that it gets to be tricky there. Um, but what we're doing is looking at the because we're looking at the physical umbil umbilical cord, that's true, but also where the uh where were we fed as children? Because sometimes that's not always the case where people get to know their parents, but um, maybe they had people who helped to feed them when they were younger. And in a way, that is a cord as well. So um, that might be the pico o. It's center of connection to parents and personal lineage, even the hanai, including the hanai. Um, everyone put your hand on your lap and say pico a. Pico a. Pico a. Pico a. Your pico a is is representative or is represented by your genitalia, and your genitalia connects you to future generations. Um, not everyone can have keiki, but our pico a helps us to remember that for Hawaii people and the Hawaii worldview, our children are important. Um, so that's not all. Those children didn't come out of one pico a, actually. Um, right, you know, in the number three, generally, that's not how that works. Sometimes it is, but I don't think in that case, that's not, no. That's multiple peoples is keiki. So in general, the importance of keiki in our lives um, is a cultural concept and, and, and a cultural truth for Hawaii people and indigenous people everywhere, if, I mean, is what, I, what I'm thinking. Okay, the last thing I'm going to just blast you with, because this is a lot of information I know. Um, and if this is going over your head, no worries, because I'll I'll be putting these slides onto the uh, what what is that SCED platform for you can for for you all to um, be able to access. Na honua e kolu o kamoliola. 
Um, the Honua Ieve, which is depicted in photo number one, that is the safety of a womb or the safety of a family or the safety of a household. And when that safety is established, when children are not expecting their parents to be yelling at each other or when children recognize that mommy and daddy both are here for me um, or like if not mommy and daddy, then tutus or uncles, or I have people I can trust in my life. When the Honua Ieve is solid, then those solid children can go on into the Kipuka. They can move on into this and, and contribute to the safety of a community with shared values and a strong sense of cultural identity, like in picture number two on the slide. You guys can see my slides, right? Okay, because if you couldn't see my slides, I would really, really be wondering <laughs> what the heck I was. Okay, good, good that you can see my slides. Um, but when when keiki are not es established in the space of the ohana, it's difficult for them to transition into the kipuka. Um, it's difficult for them to move into a space with other personalities and other people uh, in their youth. But when they learn in that space, because in photo number two, not all those keiki um, were born speaking Hawaiian. Some of them are learning because this is an a immersion preschool. Um, and in this space, they learn about Hawaii values, about mauliola and those kinds of things. And then they feel safe enough to stand on a sure-footed identity of culture and cultural grounding. And when that happens, they can puka out into the Aoholo Okoa, where they are safe to engage with other cultures and worldviews while standing on a firm foundation of cultural identity. So, for example, um, when I was growing up, I, I, didn't, I didn't really grow up in an immersive space. I, I went to Punanaleo, but I, I ended up going to Kamehameha, um, and, and I, I didn't really have this strong sense of identity in my family. Um, nobody in my family speaks Hawaiian except me. Uh, my dad had his fair share of trials with um, substance misuse. My mom, um, we come from a really tricky, a tricky um, kind of space in my life. And then growing up, every time somebody who um, wasn't Hawaiian or or any any time I stepped into a space that wasn't really um, Hawaiian. I felt really unsafe, like I had to defend myself in every space. So then I started to respond to particular ideas in a particular way because that's that foundation wasn't set for me. And so I had to hold a part of that as I grew. Even in my adulthood, I have to hold a part of that. Otherwise, I feel defensive, like I have to defend myself, defend my culture, defend my people. And that's true in some ways, but it takes on a real a real illness if you're not really sure really sure about who you are and where you come from. Um, and so we're learning about, about all of these things um, with the Honua Mauliola. Um, I, I linked this document on protective factors because I didn't know what protective factors were and they're really worth looking into. Um, but protective factors are the foundation of safety that Keiki get to grow into. Um, as, as they're growing. They include parental resilience. So how and who we are as parents, um, how resilient we are emotionally and um, financially and psychologically and spiritually um, as parents affects our keiki. Um, social connections, uh, our, our own social connections, but also our ability for our keiki to see those that we make uh, our keiki, our keiki, and their ability to recognize and identify concrete support for themselves in time of need, um, knowledge of parenting and child development. So for um, for parents to be equipped, you know, for parents to either be equipped or get equipped um, to be abundant in their parenting styles, um, and then also to promote for their own children social and emotional competence because if they don't ever see it growing up how will they ever embody it growing up and then as grown-ups you know so these are things that these are ideally it's for children but I, i'm i'm actually learning a lot um 
<laughs> because I think I'm working on my inner child. <laughs> this is helping me to um, inform the ways I need to improve. And so I will put these things um, in this here. I can put the link to this thing in the chat because I, I see some of you taking um, taking notes. Oh, wait, I just only sent that to Caleb. Okay, I need to send to everyone in meeting. Yes. Uh, Ikemele. Oh, why come here, Nana Emeli Kemele? Kemele here, Ilani. Um, Kumu Honua Maliola, the one that. Oh, Ikaka. Ikaka Mai. Okay, okay. Ikaka Mai. Uh, so if you go on Apple Music or YouTube and you do Ika Aka Mai, uh, Kumu, I'm reading the chat, sorry, because I can hear that Uilani asked me a question and I never respond. But anyway, yes, my Kai. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I want to, I just want to, I want to say something um, without any slides up so that I can see all of you folks. Um, the main idea of about this presentation that I'm doing is that like usually when people are thinking of protective factors, they don't think about opihi or or fishing or kappa or pa'i'ai, pohakuku'i'ai. They're not thinking of Hawaiian language or Hawaiian worldview. They're thinking of like how um five steps to be a better parent. You know, or or um, when people think parental resilience, I think of those those kind moms with the ponytails when they always go jogging with their with their strollers, you know. But that's not what that only has to look like. Um, re, re, parental resilience, social connections, concrete support in times of need, knowledge of parenting and child development, social and emotional competence of children, all, all of those things are embedded in the culture of who we are. And if we are not Hawaiian. It doesn't matter because it's embedded in the culture of who you are as what, whatever culture that you come from. Um, Aboriginal cultures and Aboriginal worldviews, the old ones, not the ones that come with all the cultural trauma now, not those, because those are harmful. <laughs> like the thing about like, what kind of Hawaiian you? You know, eat vana or um, the kind of Hawaiian that doesn't eat vana, okay? So, you know, you know because kind of in, in this younger generation, we come from we come from the trauma, from the trauma of Hawaiian being illegal to speak, or from the trauma of not being able to dance hula, or from the trauma of it, it's it's the law. You need to have an English name. Like, did you guys know that was a law before? Anyway, a lot of us are and the babies too. They're carrying that trauma in their genes, and so not that one, not those cultural values. You know, the older older than that, those cultural values. Um, they have embedded the protective factors of how we mala makiki are embedded to those cultural worldviews, to those cultural truths. How we connect with each other as ohana, that's embedded, embedded into who we are. And so it's just a matter of remembering. Um, it's just a matter of making a commitment to learn more about Hawaii ways in our daily lives every day. It's about renewing the commitment that we have to ourselves and our own relationship to cultural truth so that we can serve our keiki and be better equipped to help them and to guide them in good ways that we already know that come naturally to us. We just got to remove those blockages and remember, you know, so I'm going to stop yapping my chaps so that we can do the, the post poll. And um, I want, I, and it's not like, Oh, you guys never get the right answer. Like you wasn't paying attention. It's that there's no shame if if you cannot remember the answer because the idea is just that you're able to remember that we're equipped. We're equipped with the cultural um, truth that we come from as Aboriginal descendants. So that's the idea. Um, I want to open it up for Q and A, but I'll post the poll. Um, by if you can post the poll, and then we'll take the poll again. Can you folks see the poll? Okay, okay. I kind of sped through this presentation, but uh, by how much more time do we have? About what time is that? Eleven thirty. Fifteen more minutes. Fifteen minutes, my yeah. That's good time for Q and A. Yes. Okay, my So the poll is launched. 
And let's open for the Q&A if anybody has questions or mana'o on what I was talking about. I have a question. Yeah, Nicole. Um, the Ike Kuuna sounds like it should be, I mean, is it interchangeable with Ike Kukuna? That's that's a good question. And I actually talked about that in the previous session, but that's thanks for asking. Um, kupuna are people, um, like like our actual people. Um, but the kuuna is like a tradition made up of generations of those people. You know, so I mean, um, I guess you could say it can be interchangeable because Ike Kuuna is is ancestral knowledge. And Ike Kupuna can also be considered ancestral knowledge. But the Kuuna has to do with the age, like, like not just one ancestor, uh, not just one ancestry. Like, for example, if if every um if every generation of your family does like makes makes patele, that's awesome. And that's Ike Kupuna because that's all your kupuna. Um but when we're looking at Maoli Hawaii, or if you were looking at Maoli Pocolico or like Puerto Rican Maoli, then it would be Ike Kuuna if multiple, multiple Kupuna, multiple lineages made Patele. You know, so for us, it's Ike Kupuna. It is Ike Kupuna because our own Kupuna, Kani Kapila in my family. Um, but it's also Ike Kuuna because. My ohana come from um, Mele. I think others of us in here also come from a lineage of Hawaiian singers. So that's another lineage connected to that in Hawaii. Um, or if we use emu as an example, we all had to make emu because that's how we ate. So that is ike kuuna. It's multiple lineages, not only the one, you know. But that that's how I understand that. Um, that's my mana'o on that. But that's a good question. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Did, did that yeah. answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. Just something I was thinking too. Inherited knowledge and practice. Yeah. Polole. Polole. Oh, mahalo vai for the YouTube link. Oh, yeah. Aloha. Go ahead. Go ahead. Was that no, I just wanted to say, you know, every time I come and listen to your mana'o and kuka kuka, like you have so much ikit that you bring. And I just wanted to share my mahalo. And when you talked about the piko i, piko o, and piko a, it reminded me how we need to, or we should often check in with ourselves, like pehea ao. And by using these different picos, we're able to better fill ourselves but also help our clients or like community members and it reminded me of the newer framework kukulu kumuhana that they have kind of constructed and looking at through like more of like an ecological model sense of how we can address these health disparities on an individual community and then all the way up to the policy level so i just wanted to share like how that has been so helpful from the first time you introduced that like a few years ago to me and then how it's so relevant and how it will be like in the days moving forward. Yes, oh yeah, no, mahalo Caleb for remembering that because Caleb was one of my first students. I cannot believe it was a few years that I was, that I was doing this. That's kind of a little bit crazy for me because I didn't know that, I forgot about that thing that I taught Caleb. Uh, but yeah, it, it's important for us to check in with ourselves and to be okay, to be all right. Um, also to check in with each other, uh, to make sure that the community of, of people are, are okay and really hanging in there. So mahalo, Caleb. Mahalo, ya oi. Um, I also wanted to chime in. Um, I have to actually go check on some students in a bit, but um, I just want to mahalo for sharing this Ike and reminding all of things that we can remember and strengthen. Um, I think of the students that I work with or the children and their family, their families. And I just think of um, the generational trauma that's happened, you know, for them and like the missing, these missing pieces that they, don't know or have so there's a lot of um a lot of loss you know a lot of um you can see a lot of the 
the things that they don't have as you work with them, but there's also a lot of things that they do. And so um, I think just, my gosh, well, anyways, <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting Terry, but I think it's really, um, really important to remember our, um, our Maoli Ola and, and how we can incorporate it into our practices because um, not, it, not every setting that we work in um, has this. And it's a really good reminder to um, blend it into what we do and um, help, our, help the people that we help um, as well. So I kind of like what Caleb said too, like making sure you, you malama you so that you know, when you have to give to others, you have to give. And yeah, I think that this would be great for, especially um, our young kids and the youth, I think they definitely need it, um, especially our native students. Um, there's so many on Moloka'i and uh, a lot of them don't know. Uh, their heritage or their their culture or even some language. Not that not that they're super lost, but there there's missing pieces and that that is that generational trauma that we've all experienced. So oh sorry about the crying. <laughs> Mahalo nui. No, I wale oi e mihi tita. Um, he manao ko i ko i loa ka ho a mauli, ka malama ana i ka mauli. Uh, I kela papa mamua o ke ia ka papa mua loa, ua puka ia kela manao a ua ue ke, ke kahi vahine no ka mea a ole oia maa i na mea o ka mauliola, a he Hawaii oia. Um, I'm explaining that uh, in the session previous to this, somebody brought that up, that that yeah, this is all really uh, awesome and, and important. Ah, yes, porole. But, and then she started to cry and she said, but you know, for me, I never had that opportunity to learn Hawaii things. My kupuna don't know any of the stuff that you're talking about. And I was teased a lot for being the haole girl because I speak a certain way and I look a certain way. Um, and and I'm not any, the idea was that she's not less at, less Hawaiian than anybody else, um, but that we are a community of Hawaiians. That That's the, that's the actuality of it is that, um, there are communities, entire communities of Hawaii people who don't get to see themselves or anything relevant to their true cultural selves, their identity in any of the spaces. Like a lot of our institutions, okay, great, Hawaiian name, but how do you hold space for Hawaiian culture? How do you hold space for Hawaiian history, for Hawaiian truth, for Hawaiian being, for relationships? for connection. So I think this is really um just mahalo ya oi u ilani and ike vo pone ha ale e mala ma keki e mala ma oi you know um and mahalo ika hele ana mai yene um but but what i was thinking of is just that um this is a call to action. All of this information that we're hearing today is a call to action. Um let's in our home lives yes strive to learn more Hawaii things. But let's also in our professional lives strive to learn and teach more Hawaii things and also develop trainings on Hawaii things. Not, 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 not just only Hawaiian doctors that come in to talk about the disparities of Native Hawaiian health with their pie charts and their graphs and all their statistical data. Not, not only those guys, yes, those people, but also the farmers. Also, the children themselves, like the culture bearers, the tutus and papas, invite them to your dang thing, pay them to host a training on Mauliola because it's related. A lot of our programs, they do programs um, on Hawaiian culture, but where are the actual Hawaiians? <laughs> like, okay, you're going to hold a meeting, hold space for community building, but not invite the actual community? What's going on? You know? <laughs> you know? So we got a whole ab Maoli. We have to start integrating these Hawaiian worldviews in all the areas of our lives. Personal, yes, we have to learn more. And if we're not Hawaiian, we still need to learn more because the last time I checked, if you're living in Hawaii, you're living in Hawaii. You're living on Hawaii. So you have to know about Hawaii. 
especially in order to serve our children and the other children who are not Hawaii, who live in Hawaii. You have to know. And so, yes, strive to learn more personally, but strive also to advocate for the, the systemic uh, representation of Hawaii people and Hawaii truth, because that is how you achieve wellness. Um, and that is how you develop these protective factors for the keiki, you know. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to preach and just like go off on, on all that of those things. <laughs> but I just want to say that um, the Hawaii, wait, do we have time? What time do we have? Only 50 seconds left. No, <laughs> you got, we're, we're good on time. Okay, okay. Yeah, Mike, 45. I, I know we still got to go over the poll, but um, I want to tell you guys this, and I never tell the other guys, but I want to tell you this, and, and I, I, might, I might talk about this in the, in the closing. Um, this was a really interesting process for me to be involved in this, in this partnership um, to open and close. Because initially, um, one, of the, one of the titas from the partnership reached out to me and she was like, oh, Kule, um, just wondering if you would um, come, you know, give a, one of these, do one of these for the conference. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, she was like this um, because I, I'm, I really mahalo that I was able to be paid um, to do this, to do this with you here. Um, and also, we should start to expect to be paid. Not all, always Hawaiians got to do stuff for free. <laughs> I don't count. I don't count already with that. Um, but so, so I'm really grateful. But then it, the, the concept was like, oh, can you also open? Can you also open our, um, the kind? So like do an opening chant. And I was like, what? Um, I can do an opening chant if this is going to be a culturally safe space. And then I, and then it, I had to really advocate for, for the incorporation of these cultural protocols that I talked about earlier in this space, not just agon unga bunga hoo-ha one chant out and then you're going to start. You, you know, and, and nobody knows what I just said. I could be cursing you off for, for all we know. <laughs> you know and so, so this, this is the Hoi Kaika partnership actually embodied the process of learning more. And then, and, and then I was like, okay, but you only, who's going to close it? You cannot open with a chant and then not close with a, with a pule. Kind of open and then it, oh, who's going to close it? And they're like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Could you actually, could you also do that too? <laughs> and I was like, um, okay, yes, yes, thank you. But you see the willingness, the institutional willingness to learn. And the, the tita I was talking to was so grateful. And then I ended up explaining to her that, um, my sis, I can open, I can close, I can do, do, do two, the, two of these things, but not for the amount of dollars that you was going to pay me to do one of these things. <laughs> you know, I had to advocate for like, okay, this is what this costs. This is what culturally safe space and the development of that and the structuring of that and the impl the implementation and facilitation of that costs. And if you cannot afford that, then we can do this, this not the same as that, but less than that. And if you cannot do that, then we can do a little less than that. But I, you're not going to pay me to do a chant, my girl. Like, um, fam, we're not going to do that today, <laughs> you know? And so we didn't. And so we didn't do that. And we had conversations about how to appropriately hold space. But I wanted to just give that really quick example of what that looks like. Because it looks like me being strong enough as a Hawaii to advocate for myself and to advocate for my people and to advocate for my community and to advocate for the right way of how to do things, not just take the money because and do a chant, you know, so... Um, just wanted to share those things, and I and and I really hope that this is inspiring us to to dig deeper, to dig deeper, and really truly know and understand our value as Hawaii people, our value as Hawaii allies, if we're not Hawaii people, and the value of Hawaiianness and the function and role of Hawaiianness in protective factors for keiki, in the institutions that those keiki go to in the organizations that support those keiki, the, the cultural relevance, the mauliola, the health of the identity has to be present and functional. So thank you folks for this. I'm going to share these results. Let me see what you guys put. Okay. Mauliola, most of you got that correct. It is both indigenous health and the name of a Hawaiian island, Pololei. The Kumu Honua Mauliola, everyone got that correct. Yes, I'm glad we know it's now a cool reggae song. Go check it out because my brother gets royalties since he wrote that song. So go just go play them till the 
speakers give out. Um, okay, and then we have the three Pico. Yes, E, O, and A. We all got that correct. Uh, the four components of Mauliola um, are Pili Uhane, Olelo, Lavena, and Ike Kuuna. But also, Kanaka Aina Akua and Pilina are important too. So if you put that one, no worries. But nobody put Lilo and Stitch. So that's the most important thing of this whole conference, that nobody chose that. Okay. <laughs> okay. The five, uh, three of the five protective factors. Oh, ukulele, down, going. Uh, the three of the five protective factors uh, include parental resilience, social connections, and concrete support in times of need. And I probably did it again where I wasn't sharing the results. But anyway, most of us got all of these questions, right? So that means I'm doing a just an all right job at this thing about these presentations. So um, to you, Adrian, to you, Pohai Ki Aloha, to you, Courtney, to you, Keala Kaopuiki Santos, to you, Joe, to you, Ko Nane Akamahina. That's a good name. Kapa Ko Nane Akamahina. To you, Kainoe Lani Joy. To you, my Auntie Melinda Lloyd. To you, Denise. Yaoi Uilani. To you, conference team and whoever you are um, in Iao Valley from the Hawaii Kaika Partnership screen. To you, Vai, to you, Caleb, to you, Nicole. Um, mahalo for having me. Mahalo for lending your um, manao in this space. And I'm going to stop and we'll do Q&A. Was I answering one question all this time? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, anyone have any more questions? Or manao? I'm going to put my um my email address again right here in the chat. Um, if you folks want to keep in touch or learn more about what I do or even the other, because I have another actual real job um, that I do, if you guys want to learn more about that, um, that would be awesome to keep in touch. But yeah, any other mana'o? Any other mana'o? Joe, aloha oi. Are you in the forest actually or is that your background? The forest is like a little bit away, but this is a spot that I've been trying to malama. So I'm not there right now. No more, no Wi-Fi out there. Yeah, yeah, you know, true that, true that. How are you doing, and how how was this presentation for you? Um, I appreciated it a lot. I think that there's a couple things that. So I work at Key Project. It's a community center in Kalu. Um, and so I think that uh, it's kind of empowering to just think about integrating into like I don't know just integrate into everything like always make culture part of everything don't actually no screw that don't try and make culture part of everything like start cultural and then like make it work and then I like that a lot um, and then the protective factors I think are really concise and something I can share with um, like my supervisors is like guiding Manao to make sure that we're always pushing towards some of those things. I thought those were really beautiful and holistic um, and just double, lots of good things to double check on. So mahalo. Yeah, mahalo piha ya oi. I'm interested in learning more about the key project. What island are you on from? Uh, or on from? On <laughs> Oahu. From. I'm Oahu. in the Oahu Kahalu. Yeah. Oh, Kahalu. My kai. My kai loa. Mahalo, mahalo for joining us from Kahalu. Oh, you know. Mahalo, Joe. Anybody else? Manao? Maybe I'm in the chat. Mahalo, bye. Yeah, normalize being us for our Ike, or you know. I'm just reading Judah the Kinds now. Okay, great. Okay, if, if nobody has any, Auntie Melinda, how are you doing? You okay? You have any thoughts for I me? I really enjoyed everything today, because like, I'm one of that generation that wasn't raised in the culture, and I come from a fractionated background, too. So I just appreciate, and I learned so much from you today, and I really appreciate, um, and I've been in social work field for 30 years, and I learned stuff from you, uh, particularly the slide about being raised in the culture like you know how you how you say in that safety piece is so yeah. important so thank you so much 
Thank you. A lot of these things came from the book. I never, I, I never hardly make none of this. It was only screenshots. <laughs> Well, you shared your lived experience, I think, and yeah, that also yeah. helped a lot to make those connections. So I really appreciate you, Kule, and I appreciate your power and the mana that you have and that you're sharing with us. Thank you so much. Uh, mahalo, that is the Ike Kuuna. That mana belongs to all of us as Hawaii people. So let us partake, let us engage in that way. Maikai, mahalo, auntie. Pai kia aloha. Mahalo anui for all that you do. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Incredible job. Aloha. Denise, RN, in the front lines, how you doing? You okay? You have any more now? Okay, I can hear you. Mute. I wanted, Mute te. Yeah. I wanted to mahalo you because um, I'm just going to straight out and say it, but I'm not Native Hawaiian. Um, but as as a wahine and one that's kind of late to the game of learning um, traditional Hawaiian practices, olelo, um, I am raising my daughter with um, a lot of these values. Um, so I absolutely appreciate you for um, all your ike and your openness. Um, Unfortunately, not everybody is as open to share, and that's been my struggle as a non-Native Hawaiian. Um, I have the drive, the compassion to help people, but there's certain things that are sacred or kapu because I'm not Hawaiian. Yep. But, yep. Um, but I, I, I find ways to learn and to gain the permission to, to, to help our native Hawaiian keiki. Um, so I did write down your email because I, I would love for you to speak to some of our, our makua um, because I think it's important, the things that you are sharing. And it, I can relate to it so much because I have a lot of trauma in my life that I deal with. And that's exactly why um, I do what I do is because I, I see the damage it can cause, generations and generations go on and nobody changes anything until it's the keiki that decides I don't want to be like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mahalo you. And I mahalo you, says thank you so much for um, no ka'awamo ana ike la kuleana, for kind of shouldering that, that yoke of a culture that is not even you, like yours per se but is only yours to you living here and being here i can only hope that people like you take it upon themselves to carry that too um so thank you for modeling that for our ohana who are from away um i think maybe somebody needs to use this room and now i'm taking up all the time but <laughs> but by yeah is that no, correct you're all good no thank you so much it was such an amazing presentation not just as your moderator but again as a hawaiian a native hawaiian myself i learned so much from the last presentation and then now, you know, it's all, it's soaking it all in. But um, thank you so much, everyone. We're actually going out for lunch. Um, the next presentation will start at 1230. So you can go back to your sketch um, and then uh, click on the link to your registered session. Um, but Kule, thank you so much again. It was so awesome to have you. And I, yeah, mahalo, I'm speechless. Mahalo, Vailana. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, mahalo, Kako. I'll see you at the closing. Thank you. I will.